So I'm taking a 20 day grad trip to London and Spain and this vlog is gonna document the London part. So this is my first time flying overseas by myself and it was quite scary because it was like 13 hours but I finally reached and this was day one of when I woke up. I went to walk around Hyde Park which was really beautiful. And I realized that the dogs here like run around unleashed which it's kind of cute, like they seem so free. And this is me and Audrey at Honey and Smoke, and we're trying the dessert, which was really quite good. It was a good touch. Now we're making our way to Regent Park Snowbone Air Theatre to catch Legally Blonde, and we're running a bit late, so. Okay, yes! <laughs> The experience was pretty cool. It was my first open park musical and it started drizzling halfway so I was quite scared what was going to happen but it was very enjoyable. Since we were already in Regent Park, we just took a walk around and it was really nice. The parks here are so pretty. Holy shit! This is the picture I see on Google Maps. So previously when I was interning pre-uni, the girl was gonna come to UCL, so we would spend our office days like looking at Google Maps and looking around the the Google Maps Street View. And now I'm finally seeing everything in person. So it was pretty cool. Audrey was just bringing me around her school, the streets that she frequent after school, and this is Chinatown, where she got pickpocketed. So be careful there. <laughs> Going ahead to watch Moulin Rouge because I haven't watched it before and I heard that it's pretty good. I watched the show before coming to watch the musical and I thought it was like so so. I guess the music was good. And then we're off to Cambridge. This train system was quite complicated. Like for the booking of the tickets and all, I, I don't know why London's train is so complicated. But we finally reached and it was so pretty. It was crowded with like students with tourists taking pictures but it was so beautiful the weather was perfect it wasn't even too cold which i was scared of and we walked around to look at the other colleges um i think the prettiest one would be king's college but for that one you have to pay to go in so we saw the chapel which was really nice and just the architecture around is like super old super pretty So this is the chapel inside King's College and you can see the windows just like are so nice. I was just in awe really, just looking at this, it's so grand. And I don't have a gimbal so I can't afford one, that's why it's so shaky, so someone please buy me a gimbal. This is such a pretty feel, it legit looks like a scene out of a fairy tale or something. And I took some really nice photos here. And then this is called punting, which is when you ride on the boat and then someone rows the boat for you along this river which passes by a few of the schools. But you have to pay a bit for it. So you're just wandering along the streets. And there's a free museum over there, so you can just go visit. So day 3 was when I walked around Borough Market and some of the other London attractions. It's all along the same street so it's quite easy to go and visit all. Um, it was so crowded that I actually felt a little faint from walking around. It, I feel like it's just like a Covid spot, you know, like no one's masking up and everyone's just walking around. 
So I got a juice to freshen up. But I did enjoy like the whole bustling vibe of the market. And then we went down to see the attractions. Um, this area was just full of tourists taking pictures with the yeah. London Tower Bridge. And then this is the Big Ben. It's quite difficult to get a nice shot. And then this is the Palace of Westminster. So on day 4, we booked a day tour to the Stonehenge. And we would be covering Bath and Le Coq Abbey, which is a medieval village. So that by the time we get to Stonehenge, it will be after the opening hours. And then we can enter into the inside of the stone area. So this is Bath and it looks really nice. It's very old. It just gives off the very medieval vibe because the Romans used to bathe here. And there's a small museum where you walk through and learn about the history of the place. And then I got a hot dog and an ice cream and both were really nice so after a bath we headed to Lecoq Abbey which is known for being a very old medieval village and it's just been kind of untouched by modern influences so if you see that over there it's for people in the past to clean their shoes before they go into their houses and just a lot of features were very interesting to us so this was a bar that we had our a lunch in and this is Harry Potter's um, parents' house um, that was shot in the film. By the time we reached Stonehenge, it was already around 6-7pm. It's still really bright because the sunset is very late in the summer. Once we reached the Stonehenge uh, gift shop, we had to take their specific bus to come down to this area and also their Stonehenge tour guide came to talk about the area so they were pretty strict about it I'm saying that we couldn't touch the stones or go too close to it because it's protected I think within the group there were a few of them who were really interested in discussing the theories of how the Stonehenge came about and so the guide just entertained them throughout this session but I was just walking around taking pictures because you know I don't know why it's here it's just cool to look at there are a few of these like structures where there's the one on top of two standing ones and we're not allowed to touch them so we can only look up close like that because they're scared that we will destroy it and there's some stuff on the rocks as you can see here that's like endangered it's very nice when you can see the sun so on day 5 I went to look at the palace guards and went shopping so this is the place where some of the guards start out at and then they will march towards Buckingham Palace and they will switch with another group of guards This is when I realised that they are actually marching super fast so I had to kind of press walk slash run to catch up with them and this is the other group of guards from Buckingham Palace lots of horses, very cute also very cute is the Queen's Corgi so we went around, there was some like guards museum we had to pay for it so just stood outside to take photos and then walking through the parks again because the parks are so pretty
After that, I traveled down to the Notting Hill bookshop, even though I've never watched the movie before. I went to buy some books and got the tote bag. And after that, I went to Jack Wales to get my boyfriend some clothes. Doesn't let me get these. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This was at Ben Cohn. Um, I have more detailed reviews on Breakfast with Bananas where I put down all the food that I ate in London. She was just bringing me around and then we went to Henley's where there was a whole Harry Potter basement. Both of us are Potter heads. So. And then we went to Primark and I got like a ton of shit because it's very cheap. <laughs> Day 6 is our long-awaited Harry Potter studio tour so we had to meet at King's Cross where the bus would drive us down about an hour plus to this faraway place outside and it was crazy because we were able to see the real sets, the props and whatever that they used in the show and I think it was the same day that some small British kids were having an excursion so it legit felt like the real Harry Potter experience. So these are the props and the costumes for the u ball, the Gryffindor's boys dormitory, some of the clothes that they wore in some of the different shows. And this is the mirror of... I forgot. And this is Dumbledore's office. Super cool. Looks exactly the same. This is the one where he puts his memories into the basin and this is the potions classroom So this is Hagrid's hut and This is the scene of Nagini trying to eat the woman and they got into some more technical aspects like the Wamping Willow and attacking Ron's family's car and there were some interactive aspects as well They went quite in depth into how a lot of the movie effects were being used to appear as though it's magical. This is the set of the Forbidden Forest and to be honest it was so real that it actually felt a bit scary. Like the sound effects, the lighting, it made it all seem really real. This part with the spiders was horrifying. We were able to walk through the Hogwarts Express and for each of the cabins, it showed how the scene was like for each of the movies. So for example, the Goblet of Fire, the exact props that they used, the vibe that it created. And then we headed to Privet Drive, where we walked through the house. There was a huge section on goblins and also this is the disgusting Voldemort horror crux that was in Harry Potter and it was quite cool to see how they animated all these stuff. This is Gringotts Bank which apparently it's a new installation. It was really grand. <laughs> oh my god it looks very real. This Diagon Alley and that's the Nimbus 500 or 400, can't remember. <laughs> and this is the model of the entire school. So that's how they took a lot of the panning shots from above the school. And then we're just trying out, testing the wands, but we didn't buy because it's so overpriced. So after that, we met our friends for dinner and dessert. So this is the Kinako Toros and this is the matcha ice cream. Oh, 
Day 7, we headed to Kensington Palace, so we didn't know we had to get tickets in advance, so we had to queue to get it at the next time slot, and for the meantime, we just walked around the park, enjoying the Diana Memorial. We weren't allowed to take videos inside, so I don't have any footage of that. And then after that, I met Audrey's uni friends, and some of my friends at a bar. Yay, so Nadine is finally here! Yay! <laughs> so with Nadine here, I was just enjoying my last few days in London, watching Hamilton. And then after that, we're going to depart to Spain for our trio girls trip. So we're just packing and getting ready for our Spain trip. I just finished packing my luggage. <laughs> I'm cutting out the Spain part because I just want this to be on London. So after we returned back, I was left with two days before going back to Singapore. So they just wanted to show me around London. We went to visit Spitalfields Market where we got some food and we went thrifting. <laughs> The present moment began. Okay, go. Okay, bought this at the market. So funny story, while eating dinner, I went to the toilet and I couldn't lock the door. So someone barged open and was so apologetic that he almost started crying. It was quite embarrassing. A last day in London. Oh, my last day. Yeah, look at our fit. So we cool. <laughs> So they brought me to this place to drink hot chocolate and it was so good. I bought a pack of hot chocolate back home to Singapore. It's really damn nice. And then after that we went to visit Glossier because I've never seen a Glossier like store before. I didn't buy anything because I decided that I had done enough shopping in Spain. So just like looking around. How to eat scones by Audrey. <laughs> watching my very badly edited video and I hope you enjoyed it.